A while ago, I drafted a little command line tool called Maxigen to allow the creation of simple max patches from the command line. It's written as a Ruby gem, so you'll need the Ruby interpreter installed on your machine. If by any chance you're working on a Mac, that should be automatically the case. Let's first install this gem with gem install Maxigen. If you have already installed it, please update it to the latest version 0.4.1 because I have made significant changes to make the examples in this screencast work. If you'd like to know more about how to use it, please refer to the README on GitHub. After installing it, we call Maxigen install, which will ask for the location of your Max installation's ref pages, since it will construct the object list from there. Eventually, we need to find out where our Maxigen executable is located for later use. Please note that this will be in a different location in your environment. Now let's open our REPL server file. What I intend to do in this tutorial is make parts of our actual patcher live scriptable by exchanging the contents of a bpatcher. Let's first sketch how we want to achieve this. We're going to input commands to our REPL that first tell it which bpatcher to use, for example, cutoffs, and then the Mexigen representation of a patch. So we're going to split the input into two strings and destructure them into a JavaScript array patcher name patch. Next, we need to prepare the path used in the script because chances are your maxgen executable cannot be found when running it in the context of a max patch. So we add the path we discovered earlier to our path like so. Of course, we also need to require the path object from the Node.js standard library. Let's actually move the statements into the try-catch block. Now, let's sketch a function we want to invoke to actually create our patch with Maxigen. Let's call it make patcher, and it will take the patcher name and the patch from our input. Let's add three more imports, the util, child process, and fs modules. We're going to use the permissify method from util to wrap the calls to childprocess.exec and fs.writefile in promises. Otherwise, we would need to use callbacks, which are ugly to read and debug. Just bear with me, please. All right, now on to the heart of this episode, the makePatcher function. Basically, we're using exec to make our node script invoke the Maxigen executable with the arguments given to it from our REPL connected to an outlet by default. This will return a JSON representation of our max patch, so let's capture it in the output variable. Since we wrapped it in a promise, we need to await its output. The second step is to actually write it to the file specified by patcher name, which is also called asynchronously and must be awaited. As the whole method thus is executed asynchronously, we must flag it as async. If you are not familiar with this new way of handling promises, there are a million blog posts and tutorials out there explaining it in detail. Let's return to our main patch for a second. We need to create a B patcher and give it a name cutoffs in this case. And there's another thing we need to do. When we're done creating the new bpatcher internals in the node script, we need to exchange its content, and this is done by sending a message to this patcher. 
Actually, I made a mistake here in the video. It needs to be connected to the node script's first outlet, but since it's been echoed back through the text input, it worked nonetheless. Sorry for the confusion, it's correct in the GitHub repo. All right, now we need to return to the place where we actually invoke the make patcher function. Since it returns a promise, we call then, so when it's resolved, we can send a script sandbox message to the this patcher object telling it to replace the context of the patcher named patcher name with the newly overwritten file. You can now see why I promisified this because it ensures that the sending of the message is done only after the executable is done writing. Okay, let's give it a spin. We'll first preload our B patcher with a cutoffs file. Now we specify different contents of the B patcher and you can instantly hear the changes. Let's make a second one for resonances called res. And created from our apple. load it into the vpatcher and connect it. Last but not least, we do something similar for the amplitude modulation and call the B-patcher amps. So here we are live coding parts of our actual Max environment from a REPL. Thanks to Darwin Gross for helping me out with the replacing of the vPatcher contents via this patcher. Our REPL is still crashing on invalid inputs, which isn't any good in a live coding environment, so we need to make it more resilient, but uh, we'll deal with that in a later episode.